Have you ever wondered why, as our Type 055 destroyers and smaller vessels sail toward the deep blue seas, like dumplings rolling off an assembly line? The much-anticipated Z-20F carrier-based helicopter seems to be the one critical link, lagging behind in the anti-submarine warfare system. Is this due to temporary production bottlenecks, or is it part of a quiet systemic evolution? As the Chinese Navy advances toward the high seas, let us cut through the fog and delve into this seemingly urgent yet profoundly strategic equipment development challenge. As the critical armed escort for China's carrier strike groups, the Type 055 destroyer has borne unprecedented expectations since its inception. Its signature dual hangar design theoretically provides ideal space for carrying two medium helicopters, making the versatile Z-20F anti-submarine helicopter the obvious choice is its ideal partner. The Z-20F is far more than a simple transport vehicle. It is a force multiplier integrating long-range anti-submarine warfare, maritime strike, search and rescue, and transport capabilities. With an operational radius exceeding 200 kilometers, it significantly expands the fleet's anti-air and anti-submarine defense perimeter. Particularly when confronting stealth submarines, the Z-20F, equipped with advanced dipsoners and torpedoes, serves as an irreplaceable deep-sea hunter. From a configuration perspective, each Type 055 destroyer ideally carries two Z-20Fs to establish continuous surveillance and relay anti-submarine capabilities, a fundamental requirement for maximizing the vessel's combat effectiveness. Thus, when the second batch of Type 055 ships launched with hangars seemingly still dominated by Z-9Cs, external concerns about anti-submarine system bottlenecks became understandable. However, Attributing the issue solely to insufficient helicopters may underestimate the systematic approach to equipment development within the Chinese Navy. Production capacity challenges for the Z-20F are indeed real. Analysis of publicly available information indicates that its production line must simultaneously prioritize carrier-based aircraft while meeting substantial demands from multiple branches, including Army Aviation and the Air Force. Last year's production of nearly 30 units inevitably appears strained, when faced with the rigid demand for establishing complete air wings on carriers like Liaoning, Shandong, and future vessels. This represents a happy problem, a normal phase in the naval aviation's evolution, from having no capabilities to building them, and then striving for excellence. Under these circumstances, prioritizing limited Z-20F allocations for carrier platforms to ensure the core strike group develops a preliminary, reliable anti-submarine barrier is a logical strategic choice. More importantly, we must recognize that producing modern high-end aviation equipment is far from a simple matter of quantity. It involves complex, precise coordination across the entire industrial chain, from high-performance turboshaft engines and the mass production and quality control of composite materials, to the integration and testing of advanced avionics and mission equipment. Each step requires time and the refinement of processes. As China's independently developed next-generation utility helicopter platform, the production ramp-up of the Z-20F, itself reflects the leap in capabilities within China's aviation industry. This process demands respect for objective laws to ensure every unit delivered to the military is a premium product capable of withstanding the rigors of ocean deployment. So, does this mean the anti-submarine warfare capabilities of the Type 055 destroyers and the entire surface fleet are left in a vacuum while awaiting the Z-20F? The answer is clearly no. The widely adopted hybrid configuration of Z-20F and Z-9C helicopters and even the temporary transitional model relying primarily on dual Z-9C helicopters, precisely demonstrate the pragmatic and flexible tactical wisdom of the Chinese Navy. As a battle-proven platform, the Z-9C may fall short of the Z-20F in range, payload capacity, and all-weather capabilities. However, its high operational readiness, simplified maintenance, and expertise in coastal anti-submarine warfare and rapid response make it an ideal complement to the Z-20F. In combat scenarios, the Z-20F can advance to distant suspect maritime areas for extensive search and verification. Upon detecting targets, it can either engage directly or direct coordinated strikes using light anti-submarine weapons rapidly deployed by Z-9Cs or ship-launched anti-submarine missiles. This high-low mix not only alleviates current quantity constraints on new equipment, but also Han's complex multi-platform anti-submarine tactics and practice accumulating invaluable experience for commanding future all ZH-20F fleets. It mirrors a martial arts master who, before acquiring the ultimate weapon, still wields formidable combat power through masterful techniques and creative combinations of available tools. Looking further, 
the Chinese Navy is building a multi-dimensional, networked anti-submarine warfare system that transcends reliance on a single platform, rather than depending solely on ship-based helicopters. This vast and sophisticated system encompasses at least the following tiers. First, the formidable detection and attack capabilities inherent to the vessels themselves. The Type 055 destroyer, equipped with a large hull-mounted sonar, advanced towed array sonar, and rocket-assisted torpedoes, functions as a potent anti-submarine node in its own right. Second is the aerial component, which extends beyond ship-based helicopters to include large fixed-wing, anti-submarine patrol aircraft like the KZ-500. Leveraging its long endurance, wide coverage, and heavy payload capabilities, it provides continuous surveillance over vast maritime areas, serving as the aerial command post and information hub of the anti-submarine network. Third is the underwater component, encompassing various submarine types, unmanned underwater vehicles, UVs, and an increasingly sophisticated network of seabed sonar arrays. Finally, the space-based and information support system encompasses ocean surveillance satellites, data links, and the integrated command and control system across all military branches. The Type 055 destroyer's formidable information integration, and processing capabilities position it as a critical node within this network. Even during its transitional helicopter configuration phase, the destroyer's capability to receive near real-time, wide-area underwater intelligence from the Z-500, other vessels, and satellites via high-speed data links, and to direct itself or other weapons platforms within its formation to execute long-range precision strikes, has already brought about a qualitative leap in the fleet's overall anti-submarine warfare capabilities. Therefore, the so-called bottleneck represents more of a transitional phase toward an ideal state, a natural focus on relative weaknesses as strengths continue to grow, rather than a systemic capability gap or deficiency. The integration of the Z-20F will be the final pair of agile and sharp wings, added to this already formidable system, making it more complete and formidable. Of course, the pursuit of enhanced production capacity and comprehensive system optimization for the Z20F remains ongoing. Expanding production capacity involves not only quantity, but also supply chain management, achieving high-volume domestic production of core components, and synchronizing the development of post-production maintenance support systems. The future development path is clear. First, steadily expand production of the Z20F and its variants. After meeting carrier strike group requirements, systematically upgrade main combat vessels like the Type 055, Type 052DL destroyers, and amphibious assault ships, achieving a comprehensive replacement of anti-submarine helicopters on flagship warships, a systemic project requiring several years to complete. Second, drive innovation in carrier-based helicopter support models by exploring the establishment of aviation support units with intermediate maintenance capabilities aboard large vessels, like the 055, aircraft carriers, and even large comprehensive replenishment ships. These units would carry critical spare parts, and maintenance personnel to enable rapid at sea troubleshooting and periodic inspections, significantly boosting operational availability and mission flexibility while reducing reliance on rear base maintenance. This mirrors a key capability enabling the U.S. Navy's long term carrier strike group deployments, a capability we are rapidly catching up on. Third, accelerate the integration of unmanned systems with manned helicopters. This seemingly urgent equipment transition is, in fact, an essential phase of adaptation and advancement for major naval powers advancing into the deep blue. While observing the Z-20F's progress toward carrier deployment, we must recognize the accelerated formation of a multidimensional, networked anti-submarine system behind it. From sea-based to air-based, from manned to unmanned, each node is tightly integrating. Bottlenecks will eventually be overcome, and once the system's full potential is unleashed, it will pave a safer, deeper sea lane for our giant vessels venturing into the open ocean.